Hi and welcome. I'm Levi. And I'm Sarah. And we're from We Heart Nerds. And we're here today to present the how to play video for Magnum Opus. In Magnum Opus, you're playing an alchemist. And like all alchemists, you're looking for the one thing that everybody's searching for how to make a philosopher's stone. You'll do this by collecting reagents and transmuting them into discoveries and other research that will allow you to find clues to how to create your Philosopher's Stone. Along the way, you'll be competing with the other players to find those discoveries first, reap the research benefits, find the clues, and build your Philosopher's Stone so that you can complete your great work, your magnum opus. So this is what the total setup looks like once you're ready to play magnum opus. You'll see that the cards are subdivided into various zones. So let's go over those zones together. If you start at the bottom, you have your basic trade skills and your advanced trade skills. Those are your cards down here that are colored in orange. Over here on your left, you have your all chemical compounds. Um, these are what you're going part of what you're going to use to transmute to discover things in the matrix. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Up here in green, you have your mystic components, which are the other half of what you're going to use to make your transmutations. Over here on your right, you have um, some artifacts and some knowledge, which you're going to learn and access once you've done some transmutations and you've gained some experience. These are action cards. These are attempt transmutation. Over here, you have a research deck. Inside your research deck, you can learn new things and acquire more tools to help you in your transmutations. Over here in your top left corner, this is a reagent search pile. This is a combination of the green cards and the blue cards. Over here on your far right with the purple backed cards, these are the three clues that you need to earn to learn what's going to make up your Philosopher's Stone. Over here in your bottom corner we have set up where we keep all of our tokens. The yellow tokens represent gold in this game and the blue tokens represent experience points. As you can see, all the cards are set up in a grid pattern. When you're doing your transmutations, when you have a combination of all chemical compounds and mystic components, the two that you have chosen, wherever they meet up on the grid, that's the transmutation that you're going to pick. So if I decided to use vitriol and an angel's feather for my transmutation, I would go to here to find out if I did it. If I have a successful transmutation, I flip this card, do whatever the card says, and I receive the research card that's on the bottom. If I have an unsuccessful transmutation, the card gets flipped because we attempted it, but I don't get what's on the card, and the next person to attempt it who does have a successful transmutation receives the research card on the bottom. To attempt a transmutation roll, you look at the two components that you're going to be using in your transmutation. In this example, we'll stick with the vitriol and the angel feather, which would have given us this card earlier. All you have to do is combine the difficulty rating on the red vial of both cards. In this case, the angel feather is a 4 and the vitriol is a 2. So to successfully roll, I have to roll a 6 or better on the 8-sided die that's included in the game. In this case, I would have failed, so I would not have received the researched card underneath this or been able to use what the card says on the top. If I had rolled equal to or better, in this case the 6, I would do whatever the, the discovery card says. In this case, I would receive a red clue card. And then, if nobody had already taken it, I would get the research card underneath and add it to my discard pile. And just so you know, if you ever roll an 8 on the 8-sided die, it's an automatic success. Okay. We have invited Randy Buck and Shannon Buck to help us play this game so you can see a full four-player game in action. Um, we've already set the game up and we rolled to see who's going to go first. Sarah's going to be our first player. We've all got our starting decks, which consist of six tra attempt transmutation cards and four prepare herb trade skill cards. So we are going to shuffle those decks and draw a hand of five cards to get started. I already drew Good job. Head of the class. That's me. 
Oh, we also each get three gold coins to start with. Okay, so I'm going to start my hand. Um, the round, your game round starts with the uh, trade skill phase. So I'm going to, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is earn my living by preparing some herbs for one gold coin. Then I'm also going to discard another prepare herbs card to draw a card from my deck. Um, the next thing is the table phase where I could place or remove cards from my table. I don't have any cards to do that right now, so I'm just going to skip that phase altogether. Then I'm going to go ahead and move to the experimentation phase. Um, I could choose to play an action, I could choose to uh, buy and sell components. Uh, this time around, I'm going to choose to spend three gold, and I'm going to buy an infused oils basic trade skill. And that's going to be the end of my turn. So I'm going to discard my hand, put it in my discard pile, draw five new cards. In this case, I only had four left, so I'll shuffle my discard pile. Very, very awkwardly, because there's not enough cards to do it nicely. Draw one more card, and then it's Levi's turn. So like many deck building games, it starts out kind of slow like that, where you do your basic actions until you get a good foundation of components built up in your hand. So I only have one Prepare Herbs card in my hand, so I will play that to draw a card. Luckily I drew another Prepare Herbs, so I can gain a gold piece. Thanks Randy. Since you can do that in any order you'd like, it helps you to um, draw the card first sometimes if you don't have any more in your hand. Discard that. I'll take my free reagent, add it to my discard pile, and draw five cards and a chance. I am going to buy, now I can buy two cards or one card? You can buy up to two. Okay. And one of them is one, right? Lead is one. Yeah, lead is one and uh, vial thorns are one. Okay, I will buy one of each. Okay. Just to clarify, if I play both cards, I can get gold from both. No, no. Okay. Again, no. You have to do. You can only collect either gold or a or draw a card. And if you do one, you can't do the other again. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to get a gold. Okay. And then I'll draw a card. Okay. And then I will. You can either get a free reagent from the pile, a random one. Or you could buy a reagent, or you could buy a, one of the two basic trade skills. But I can buy two if I buy two. You can buy two cards. So you could buy a basic trade skill and a component, a basic trade skill and a mystical component, or a mystical component and a and an alchemical compound. Any combination of those things. But you only got four gold. Yeah. So like this one costs one, three, two and four. Yeah. And this one is one, two, three, and four. Okay, I am gonna buy a uh, thorn thing. Okay. For one? A vial for thorn? One. A vial thorn for one. And a this for three. So and spend this? all four. Of okay. Them. It's a Infused oils? Yeah, infused oils. It's on your trade skill. Okay, those go in your discard pile, as well as the rest of your hand. And then you draw five new cards. As you guys have seen, as we finish our hands, we're discarding our hand at the end of every turn. So using the table allows you to hold on to the components you need to transmute. You won't have to discard them at the end of your turn. Okay, I'm going to prepare herbs to draw this card. Score! That's all I can do for that. So for my table, I'm going to do lead, vile thorn, and attempt to transmutation. So what's the difficulty? The difficulty is five. So that's how much from each component? Uh, four from the lead and one from the vile thorn. Okay. What did you roll? I rolled a six. Nice. Yeah. So now we follow the matrix from the vile thorn to the lead. And this is the discovery that Shannon made. Inexplicable yield. 
The results of this transmutation are an unexplainable anomaly. You may take the research card as you normally would. In addition to this, re reveal an additional face-down discovery card in the discovery matrix of your choice. Nice. Gain no further rewards. So I'm going to choose to reveal this one because it's the hardest one to get. Okay. Now do I get Yep, you also can. You reveal it. Um, just wait, what does it say? You should just nope, I just it. reveal it. Oh yeah, you just reveal it. So for future reference, if you want to do this one, you can take a Heartstone card from the Supply of Effect cards of the nice. just here. Yep, which is a little bit. And then this was your research? And my research is knowledge. So it just get, makes it easier for me to get the transmutation. To complete a transmutation later? It's a nice one. Now, to be clear, now that, now that she's done that one, that means that nobody can... Anybody can do it now. You, can, you still have okay. to try it. So, yeah, so the way this works now, you can pay gold equal to the gold cost of these two compounds or these two elements. And you still have to roll, but you can pay the gold without actually having the components. If you had those components, you could use the components, make a transmutation roll, and if you're successful, not only do you get the heart stone, but you also get whatever the research is on Okay. If you fail, you get an experience token. The, the experience tokens are great because you get to hold on to them for later transmutation rolls. So if you fail a transmutation roll, you could spend up to five experience points to improve your die roll by the amount of experience you spend. So let's say you missed it by two, you needed a six, you rolled a four, but you had two experience tokens. You spend those two experience tokens to bump your four up to a six, and now you succeed. Part of that too, you can put as many as you want out, but you, when you use the two, then the whole table goes away. That's right. Yeah. When you do your transmutation, if you have, if you have components or mystical components or alchemical compounds on your table that you're not using for that transmutation, they still get cleared off your table. Then I will place dragon's blood on my table and attempt to transmute quicksilver and dragon's blood. My total here is six. I roll a two. So I failed that transmutation. I earn an experience point, and we look at it. Quicksilver and Dragon's Blood creates a Venom Stone. Mm -hmm. Upon successful transmutation of this formula, all players, including yourself, lose an experience token if they have it. So if you wanted to use that to take away an experience, if you don't have any experience tokens, somebody else does, you could discover the Venom Stone to force them to discard it. So uh, that clears both my table and my hand, and now I draw new cards. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is play Prepare Herbs to draw to earn a gold. And then I'm going to play Prepare Herbs to draw another card. And, okay, so I just drew Serpent Scale. So I'm going to combine this with my lead, and I'm going to attempt to transmute that. So. Um, that's a difficulty rating of six. So here's hoping. I totally failed, but that's okay. Just so a one. I rolled a one. Epic fail. So I uncover though uh, compound synthesis. Um, upon successful, successful transmutation of this formula, you can take up to two of any of the mystic components or alchemical compound cards in the supply except one of those used in the discovery of this card. So you could get free stuff. Um, but I failed, so I don't get to do that. However, I did attempt a transmutation. So although I only used the lead and the serpent scale, I have to clear my entire table. So the vile horn goes away too, as does that. Dump my hand, draw five new cards. I will place vile, stone, vile thorn and quicksilver. I will go ahead and try and attempt that transmutation. Uh, Vinyl Thorn is one, Quicksilver is three, so that gives me a total of four. I rolled a four, dead on. If you roll equal to or better than, you succeed. So I rolled a four, which succeeds. So my successful transmutation uh, is an elixir of inspiration. So upon successful transmutation of this formula, roll the transmutation die. Four. You may take an amount of experience tokens equal to half the die result rounded up. So I get two experience tokens, which does not put me over the total of five maximum that you could have at any time. Mm -hmm. I also get this research. Oh, nice. 
Uh, this is the magnum opus lore for the red crystal. Discard this card from your hand at the beginning of your turn uh, to draw two cards. So that helps me learn more about the cards, or draw more cards. So that goes into my discard pile for later use. My table gets cleared, and I draw five new cards. All right, I'll uh, prepare some herbs for holds. Prepare some more herbs to draw a card from my deck. Place some dragon's blood in my table. Then I will go ahead and purchase some vitriol for three gold coins. Go ahead and purchase two coins and serpent scale. Oh, and then I will discard and drop. Okay, so I'm going to play used oils to get two gold and hopefully get rid of these hiccups. I'm so sorry. Whew. And I'm going to play pair herbs to draw a card and. So now that we have progressed in this game, you'll see I have some more cards laying about. So I, on your table, right? I have uh, vitriol on my table, which is an all-chemical compound. Um, I received the Book of Abraham the Magic, the Mage, the Magic, why not? Um, I had to pay one gold to put this on my table, and it helps reduce my difficulties when I roll for transmutations by one. This is an incomplete Philosopher's Stone which uh, reduces my difficulty for transmutations by two, so I have a total of three. Then this is a Heartsbane card, it's an artifact. Heartstone card, Heartsbane, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, and so uh, I can choose to spend this card by putting it back in the supply to re-roll a transmutation die, if I'd like. Um, so, I did my trade skill step, I'm going to put dragon's blood on my table and then I'm going to attempt a transmutation of dragon's blood and vitriol. So, um, and the reason that I'm doing that, you'll see in just a second if I can attempt this right. So my difficulty rating on this is 5, however I have a minus 3 so I only need to roll a 2 or better. So I rolled a 7, which means I have a successful transmutation. So, uh, where it lines up, Dragon's Blend and Vitriol is here. Um, with this, I get the blue piece of the Magnum Opus, so I know what my third piece of the puzzle is for to create my Philosopher's Stone. And it just so happens right now nobody has uh, transmuted this to successfully to get the research card underneath. So I collect the research card. Uh, which is a transmutation circle, which will also help me ease my transmutations later. It goes in my discard pile, as well as all of these on my table. Oops. Pardon me. All of these on my table, the card in my hand. Now, these cards get to stay on my table because they say they can. So these ones stay here. I draw five new cards, and I'm done. I haven't used the heart's bane, so it stays on my table. Gotcha. All right. I will play this Formulate Medicine trade skill to draw two cards. Then I'm going to put the Vitriol and the Angel's Feather on my table. And I will attempt to transmute those. Um, their difficulty combines to six. I have no modifiers. Like Sarah had, so I just have to roll a six or better. I do not. Uh, so I gain. I would gain another experience, but I have five here. Now, since I needed a six and I rolled a three, I'm going to go ahead and spend three experience to turn that failure into a success. So yeah, that gives me the red stone, which is the last one I need here. So now I know all three components I need to create a philosopher's stone. I'll discard my hand at my table and draw five. Okay. I'm going to prepare herbs to draw a card. And infuse oils for gold. Gold! Um, and then I'm going to play the Emerald Tablet, which gives, I pay one for that, and it gives me a minus one to.
finishing my rolls. And I'm going to put the lid down on the table. So that's two cards, right? That's all I can do. Um, yes, you can only put two cards to the table. Okay, and then I'm going to pay to get this card. So it's four and three. So may I have the deck, please, sir? Four ma'am. Four ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> so the difficulty is what? Four. Six. Six minus two, so four. Two! No! I didn't get it. So the spell on the two doesn't have enough experience to bump it up. I have no experience. She's so, I gain one gold. experience. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm so sad. Now. Life of a philosopher. I'm going to put lead on my table. I'm going to switch it and put it in my shelf. Okay. And pull, and pull the nipple and get the you all out. out. Uh, the shelf card. It allows me to, when I draw a card from and put it in my table, it gives me an extra space on my table to place one of my components. That component, if it's not used in a in a transmutation that I that I attempt, then it can stay on the shelf when I clear my table. So I can keep that that card there on my table even after I do a transmutation. If the transmutation does include that card, then it does get cleared as you. Um, also, there's a special deal if it uh, if it does not have a card under it uh, <coughs> during your turn, you may play one additional trade skill card for gold or a, or to draw a card if it does not have an alchemical component on it. Okay, so then I've got the vitriol out. I am going to buy the that one. I, well, I'm going to pay. I want to. No, I just want to pay to try to get. I'm going to try to use purple stone, oh, so okay. I'm pay for that, and I'm going to so, use the one so I have four, here. So, four gold. Oh, I can't, can't no, use that can't. combination. You have to pay for both, or... You want to do it yourself. Oh, well, then I guess I will pay for both. Can be four gold total. Yeah, so this is three, I have enough. four. Okay, I have enough for that. So, okay. four gold total. And then it's a difficulty of three. Difficulty of three. Here comes my one. Two. 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 That's okay, because I have one experience point, so I'm going to spend that to make that a success. And then you get your purple. I get a purple one. You guys all suck. You all have all the purple. I have to clear my table. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Except for the one that I have stored on my shelf. And I discard. Wait, you don't have to. Why are you clearing the table? Oh, you didn't have to clear your table. You didn't, you didn't use that. You didn't attempt, attempt to transmutation. So you don't have to clear oh, the table. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you I thought you your table when you when, when you attempt to attempt to transmute. Oh, okay, okay. Is there a is there a limit as to how many items you can have in your table? No, you can place or remove up to two cards to and from your table on your turn. But you could have as many on your table as you want. Sweet. Okay. Well, that helps me on my turn. When you do your final stone, what is how do you roll? You have to have all three on your table, uh -huh. all three components. You add up all three values and you have to that or higher. I'm so screwed. On a D8. So you want to get this, some of these things out that lower the difficulty. Yeah. But if you or roll an eight, it's an automatic yeah, success. Yes, or have roll an eight because if your total adds up to nine, then the only way you can do it is with an eight or with like experience or something like that. Okay. Uh, take gold. Your herbs. Okay. And then I'm gonna add this to my table, and then I'm going to attempt <coughs> the transmutation of my philosopher's stone oh. with the. I'm sorry. With the angel feathers, the vitriol, and the aqua regia. So um, their total difficulty level is seven, four for the angel feathers, two for the vitriol, and one for the aqua regina. However, regia, sorry. Right. However, I have a minus three, so I only need to roll a four better. I curse that down I appreciate <laughs> that. Thank you so much. Two. And I rolled a three. But I have one experience point, which makes it a four. I create my Philosopher's Stone. Nice. Normally, if you were playing the game at home and we were playing the game, normally once someone creates their Philosopher's Stone, then we all get one more round to try and build our Philosopher's Stone. And if a second person does, then you count the number of research cards that you've collected during the game. And whoever has the most research then would win. Yellow top. 
But in this case, for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna call Sarah the winner Yay! and end it here. So good job, Sarah. Yay, Sarah. <laughs> Gracious <laughs> winners. <laughs> Did you have any strategy? Uh, not really. I was just learning how to play, so I didn't really have any set strategy in mind. Uh, I just kind of went with it as it went. The game was easy to follow. I read the cards as I went, learned how to play on the fl on the fly. It was I had a good time, but not really much of a strategy, which showed in the end because I lost. My strategy was to get as many of the alchemical compounds and the components as possible, so that way at the end, no matter which three cards I got, I could pop out my components, roll the die, and beat everybody. Clearly, I failed. I couldn't get the mana stone thingy that I needed because I didn't have enough of the little yellow research cards to make my rolls easier. Uh, the game's really super fun. I love the shelf. I had three of them the first time we played and I beat everybody which was super super fun. Um, that's pretty much uh, it. My strategy was to try and slow the other players down as much as I possibly could. So I was using cards like the Venom Stone, uh, or anything I could to steal experience or slow them down while I was slowly trying to collect the things that I needed to win the game. I got pretty close, got all three of my clues, had the components I needed in my hand, but Sarah beat me to it. So all in all, fantastic game. I love the deck building. I love, it's a, it's a unique take on the deck building. The Matrix is fantastic. Um, the success and failure, the limit on the experience points, the way you can use those experience points. Um, experience points became part of my key strategy uh, in this game, which was fantastic. So all in all, great game. My strategy was to work with the basic trade skills cards. Um, I didn't utilize them the very first time that I played, and I found it was my deck got a little clunky, so this time I tried to get... Um, different cards to cycle through my deck a little bit faster and utilize the deck building portion of the game a little bit better. Apparently it worked because I won, so that was pretty awesome. Um, but I really like this game. I think it's fun. I think it's interactive between all the players. I like the way the matrix is, matrix is designed. Um, and these just being prototype cards, I already feel like it's a... Uh, uh, ready to go rendition. So I'm anxious to see what kind of changes there's going to be, if any, in the art or how they're going to do the cards differently. But I think it's amazing as it is. So, good game. It's been our pleasure to bring you Magnum Opus, powered by Game Salute, produced by Clever Mojo. If you like what you saw in the video, hit the like button below and please subscribe. Otherwise, visit us on WeHeartNerds.com. Thanks.